Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Here's an update on our solar conditions. Right now, the solar wind speed is sitting at about 460.4 kilometers per second with a density of 7.5. AR2689 was newly formed yesterday and still poses no threat for any strong solar flares. Current stretch of spotless days is zero, but so far in 2017, we've had 87. Our KP indices right now is only at a two with a 24 hour max of also at two. Taking a look at our SDO, we do not have any major coronal holes forming at this time. However, solar wind from this minor coronal hole should reach Earth around the 27th or the 28th, and it appears it will just brush our magnetic field. But also, NOAA forecasters say there is a 50% chance of G1 class geomagnetic storms on November 29th when a CME is expected to sideswipe Earth's magnetic field. The solar storm cloud was hurled in our approximate direction by an exploding magnetic filament on November 25th. And while we're talking about solar wind, I wanted to show everybody the images that were caught on November 22nd. And this is absolutely stunning and breathtaking, folks. What you're looking at here is pink and white and green aurora. And I'll go ahead and explain to you what the significance is about the pink and why it's so bright. The pink color of the outburst tells us something interesting about the solar wind on November 22nd. It seems to have been unusually penetrating. The colors of the aurora are determined by the composition of gases in the Earth's atmosphere, the altitude at which the aurora occurs, the density of the atmosphere, and the level of energy involved. Green, the most common color seen from the ground, is produced when charged particles collide with oxygen at a lower altitude. Occasionally, the lower edge of an aurora will have a pink or crimson fringe, which is produced by nitrogen molecules. Higher in the atmosphere, collisions with atomic oxygen produce red instead of green. Since the atmosphere is less dense at higher altitudes, it takes more energy and more time to produce red light, whereas green light can be made quickly at lower altitudes. Hydrogen and helium can also produce blue and purple, but those colors tend to be difficult for our eyes to see against the night sky. And more on the update about Mount Agung Here's Mari. Thanks, Jake. Here's the latest on the Bali volcano. This volcano in Indonesia could remain on the brink of a major eruption for weeks as it continues to spew ash across the island of Bali. Mount Agung has been spitting ash 4,000 meters, that's 2.5 miles into the air, stranding tens of thousands of tourists as the international airport remained closed for a second day. Lava will be welling inside the volcano's crater, but it remained unclear how bad the eruption might get or how long it could last. Experts say there's a 50-50 chance of a large eruption. It could stay like this and fizzle out, or it could be ramping up for something big. This volcano has the potential to disrupt travel for weeks. The airport will not be up and running anytime soon. If it does what it did in 1963, this could go on for weeks. Authorities raised the volcano alert for Mount Agun to its highest level and told 100,000 people to leave an area extending a six mile radius from the crater. Indonesia's Disaster Mitigation Agency has said a large eruption is possible. Mount Agung could stay at its current level of activity for weeks and not erupt explosively. However, a major eruption has the potential to damage crops on the island and kill anyone within 10 kilometers of the evacuation radius. That's about six miles. A large eruption could destroy the island's agriculture and have a major impact on tourism. A NASA satellite detected a thermal anomaly at the crater, meaning a pathway from the storage chamber in the volcano's crust has opened, giving magma an easier access to the surface. Indonesian officials first raised the highest alert two months ago when a rash of seismic activity was detected at the mountain. More than 100,000 people living near the volcano fled their homes, many abandoning their livestock or selling them for a fraction of the normal price. The seismic activity decreased by the end of October, causing authorities to lower the alert level. Tremors increased again last week, and officials upped the alert and ordered another large-scale evacuation with nearly 40,000 people now staying in 225 shelters. However, tens of thousands of villagers have remained in their homes because they feel safe or do not want to abandon their farms and livestock. We'll keep you updated on the Grand Solar Minimum. Please like and share.